45 versus 9 mil, AR versus AK, 1911 versus Glock. Now it's Glock versus Sig. Which one is better? Which one performs better? Which one shoots and feels better? But ultimately, why did Glock lose the military contract? Let's talk about it. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms. And a little while ago, you probably saw Katie out here at Take Game Training and Range in her first solo video, so good job, Katie. And uh, you probably noticed that she tested out all sorts of different firearms, uh, something that may be getting a woman's perspective uh, for women of full-sized pistols. And a couple of those pistols she tried were Glock and Sig. And so today, I'm gonna come out here and be kinda like, you know what? Let's talk about these because it seems like these guys are always at the forefront of law enforcement, military contracts, all throughout the world, and what just makes these things so good. And today I'm really just going to kind of hit on, well, how they feel to shoot. Because what I've got here is the Glock 19X, which pretty much has the 19 barrel and slide, but the 17 frame. So you have that little bit larger grip, all right? Easy enough. And then you have what I actually prefer, the Glock 45. Ultimately the same, but some minor differences. One thing I don't prefer are the sights because they are just those basic Glock U sights. But two things I do prefer is the flared magazine well and the also forward slide serrations. That's what you get the 45, but not so much the 19X for whatever reason. None of those forward slide serrations and it's not as flared as much as the actual 45 is. So in my mind, cool FDE color. I'm just gonna wind up spray painting it anyway, probably, or getting it super, super dirty and messy, kind of like the SIG over here. Uh, but yeah, the 45 is something that I think I would prefer over the 19X, personally, unless you really want that lanyard loop. So anyway, I understand it's for the military contracts, I get it. Okay, so now let's talk about SIG, right? So what I got right here is the new Marine Corps sidearm. This is the SIG M18. Kind of like the 19X in this model, it has the full-size grip with a little bit more of the compact barrel. Easy enough, cool. Both of these also have a standard capacity of 17 plus one, but they each come with some extendos. They each come with three magazines. The Glock has one, standard 17 round, but two plus two base plate extensions giving you a total of 19 rounds. The SIG is similar as it comes with three mags, but it also comes with these guys that are also extended, but giving you a total capacity of 21 rounds. So, gotcha beat there, Glock. A little bit larger capacity, as you can tell. Okay, what about some other basic functions of the gun? Well, the SIG is truly modular. If I wanted to put on a larger slide, larger frame, things like that, I can do that. And it's, I'm not having to change any serialized parts because the actual serialized part is internal to the gun. And you can see that right here. Cool. The Glock, not so much. I really can't do much to this Glock. Um, pretty much it is what it is and how it comes out of the box. So if I want to change up, I want something a little bit more compact or something a little bit larger framed or I should say a larger barrel or longer barrel, then I would actually have to just pretty much purchase that separately. Uh, it's not something I can just go out, buy, throw on here, and now I have to not worry about another 4473 or anything like that. Glock, you kind of have to. So kind of a downside there. Then again, if you don't care to change anything out, who cares, right? Cool. What about the overall function of the guns? Glocks are extremely reliable pistols. The NDLC coating that are on these as well makes them pretty resistant to corrosion, scratches, marring, things like that. And this right here is a brand new one right out of the box. And as you can tell, it hasn't been used by me, yours truly at all, because it looks too clean. So trigger, Glock trigger. They've gotten a little bit better over the years, but this has definitely a pretty smooth take up, but it's still kind of spongy. Reset is got a little bit of travel. But it's not bad, it's, it's at least smooth. Some earlier models were pretty gritty as well. It'd feel like you're just a sponge trying to like grind against sandpaper. Okay, not bad. What about the SIG over here? All right, notice two different types of safety. We have a manual safety on the SIG, not a blade safety like you typically see on Glocks right here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. A little bit of take up before we hit an obvious wall. Nice solid break and reset. I thought the reset was gonna be a little bit longer than that, so. So point in SIG's favor as to where it is a, uh, it's got a better trigger, ultimately. All right, 
mm, aftermarket support, the SIG P320, which is ultimately what the M18 is, lot, lot of aftermarket support. Not as much as Glock. Glock, you can find anything and everywhere whenever you want, and they ultimately work really, really well. Another thing when it comes to the 19X versus the 45, the sights, again, the 19X does at least have some Glock night sights instead of, again, those factory U sights, but they do have a really, they, they take up a lot of surface area. I prefer my sights to be a little bit finer. I can understand in a stressful situation, you want to be able to pick up your sights quickly and easily, especially in low light conditions. And SIG kind of, has kind of like done that hybrid. So you have really fine rear sights back here that allow you to pick up in low light. And then a really big kind of like fat front sight up here. Again, that is a night sight as well. So you'll be able to pick all that up but I would still prefer something a little bit smaller so that way if I'm shooting at a little bit longer distance with my pistol, it doesn't cover up as much of my target. The entire aim small, miss small, miss small concept, right? Okay, you'll also notice that this has the capability of being able to remove the rear sight and throw on a red dot, which obviously I'm a fan of and keeping my rear sight. We'll talk more about this guy here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm a red dot guy. I absolutely love shooting red dot sights on pistols. I think they definitely have a place, but I'm also not a big fan of red dots only because, well, batteries die and optics break and things fail. So I like to have my backups. It's the entire mindset of two is one, right? Okay. Unless you send it off somewhere, it's not coming off. It's not, it doesn't have any capability of adding a red dot, the 19X or the 45. Granted, there's different models out there uh, that will allow you to do that. I think, uh, I think actually Glock, something new for this year is that they are actually incorporating a lot of red dot um, uh, capabilities with all of their guns throughout, throughout. So cool. I just have an earlier model. All the later models, from what I understand, are all going to have red dot capabilities. We'll see. I think Katie talked to him at SHOT Show about that. So and I think that's what she said in the video. But anyway, so hopefully Katie wasn't lying to us or Glock wasn't lying to us about that. And uh, if that's the case, great. I hope they actually integrate something that allows me to co-witness though. That's one, one negative mark about the SIG here. But if you notice on my SIG 320 that I have in my holster, this is the Alpha Omega holster, by the way. Check out Alpha Omega if you guys are looking for your next custom Kydex holster. These things absolutely rock, all right? So, with this guy, you'll notice um, it actually doesn't look too beat up because I've been shooting it a lot. But you'll notice that this is the XVTAC, the, CP, the SIG P320 XVTAC. Notice the sights on this guy. So you'll notice I barely get a little bit or enough height over the SIG Romeo to actually get a co-witness. It's not gonna be necessarily a co-witness, but if I do lose my red dot capability, I don't have to worry about trying to find a torque wrench and removing this guy. I can just go ahead and just get down on the gun and then barely pick up my fiber optic. I would like for them to be a little bit higher. I'm sure I can switch them out, but I do like these sights. These are the VTAC, again, the Viking Tactics sights that also have an integrated night sight. So they're fiber optic up top, but night sight on the bottom. Unfortunately, with this optic and any other optic I've tried, uh, you lose your iron sight capability or your night sight capability. So hopefully your red dot's working in those low light conditions. Granted, the fiber optics are great at putting up, or picking up ambient light, but Still not my absolute favorite. Do like them, but I think there are like the Trigicon suppressor height night sights that do everything very well. I don't need two sets of sights if I can just get one set that does low light great and also has a very fine front sight post that I can get those really accurate shots off with and co-witness with a red dot. Thank you, Trigicon. Anyway, cool. So we've talked quite, about, quite a bit about these now, but how do they perform? How do they shoot? Let's grab the shot timer and head downrange. All right, so let's try that one reload, one shot. Let's see, uh, let's see how we do here. So I'll start at a uh, kind of just a compressed ready here, draw out, shoot, reload. Let's just see how long it takes me here. Uh, 2.93, I'm not mad about that. Let's do it one more time. Okay. Get that. Oh, I with a miss. Looks like I went too hard there. I was trying to hit that slide release and it just wasn't working for me. Mulligan. Let's try it one more time. 2.93 is the time to beat. Ah, 
three on the dot. All right, so my 2.93, best out of three, I'll take that. Okay, don't even forget, 2.93 is my time to beat when it comes to the SIG, okay? So how does it feel to shoot? Honestly, it feels great. I really like how this thing shoots a lot. It just feels good. There's nothing about it that's really all that snappy. Granted, it does have that little bit shorter barrel and slide, so you're gonna have a little bit little bit less reciprocating mass, but not as much muzzle end weight to kind of keep that dip down, right? So I'll shoot a little bit slower here, and you guys just let me know what you think. It does feel good to shoot a little bit quicker though. As you can tell, I just sped up a little bit. But okay, feels good. It's a Glock. Not a big fan of the sights. Trigger's fine. We all know the trigger's fine. But thankfully, like I mentioned before, so much aftermarket support, you can throw in very easily whatever type of trigger you want there. Okay. Let's grab that SIG 320, the M18, and run a couple drills with it. Now, right off the bat, with the M18 in my hands, it just has a naturally different feel. It's got a little bit steeper grip angle than what the Glock does, which, to me, feels a little bit more ergonomic and natural. The trigger I know I like a little bit more, but as far as the actual, uh, let's just say, utilization of the controls and how easy they're going to be to manipulate. What you notice probably on the Glock is in order for me to hit that pretty flush uh, mag release, I kind of have to change my grip just a bit. This one sticks out and protrudes just a little bit more, though it does have a little bit less surface area, so let's see how that goes whenever I have to do that reload. But as of right now, let's take a couple shots, see how it feels. I will say that that white front dot just picks up really easy, which is great again in those you know low light situations or high stress when you need something to focus on, uh, so that way you can actually you know hit your target. Okay, one shot, reload, one shot. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> it was keeping track this whole time. 143 seconds to get 45 rounds down range. Cool. All right, let's try it. Compress ready out. Let's do it. Ooh, miss. 2.95 though, but that first shot was a miss. Let's try it one more time. Mm. Ooh, that was a bad one. Okay. So a little bit less surface area on the slide release. It actually hindered me with the manual safety right here, trying to hit that. It almost feels like it would be easier for me whenever I get that mag in there to kind of come up here and then out. I could try that, but we're gonna try that again. Overall, with a miss, that was four seconds. Definitely my worst run yet. Eh. Let's try that again. Sig, I might have to give a little bit more than just three tries. Glock did come a little bit more natural to me, so. Hmm things to think about. All right, let's see if I can do this and, you know, actually chamber a round in the reload. Three point zero four. So that's still slower than what I was with the Glock. I kind of want to try it one more time. I think I can, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Let's do it. There we go, 2.59, that was a solid hit on that second one too. So, there we go, a little bit of practice. I think I've just been maybe used to Glock. Glock was what I was shooting up until I started shooting this SIG, which actually has a, doesn't hinder me as much. This one also has the flat face trigger, not much different on the internals go, but a really good flat face trigger. And you'll notice that the slide release on this guy is a little bit more surface area, no manual safety for me to actually ride or get caught up on. So pretty happy with this guy. But we're not talking about that because that's like cheating right there with all the fancy gig, gig, you know, gizmos and gadgets and whatnot. So, even though I was really quick with this, it took me a couple more tries to finally get there. Granted, human error, human whatever it is, consistency with the Glock, I probably naturally just felt more comfortable and gravitated towards that. However, once I started getting more comfortable with this, I started to get those times down even more so, which again, if I could get it down below two and a half seconds, I'd be really happy with that, but you guys don't wanna watch me out here struggle and cuss and get mad at myself for keep missing and sending the 
slide home whenever I don't have the magazine fully inserted. So anyway, let's head back to the bench and talk about maybe which one of these I prefer. So both of these are fantastic, reliable firearms. Obviously Glock lost out when it, comes, when it came to the United States looking for the next uh, standard issue sidearm for the United States Army and Marine Corps. Uh, SIG did win that contract, just like they won about everything else, uh, with the M18 and M17, like what you see right here. And I think there's only actually like one really big reason to that, obviously price, right? Price comes into a big thing, like who's gonna cut the best deal? But secondly, DOD was asking for modularity. Glock said, here's a Glock, which isn't modular. <laughs> okay, but on top of that, um, I do, th when it comes to a preference, it's, it's really hard to say. I wanna say out of the box, I would probably take the SIG P320 or the M18 over the Glock 45 or 19X, simply because I like the better trigger and I like the sights a lot more than on either the 19X or 45. And it really is just that for me. Ergonomics and all, honestly, the Glock feels great in my hand. Notice what I talked about before, a little bit different grip angle. So this one on the SIG, I believe is a little bit more steep compared to something a little bit more angled. You do have the adjustable back straps on the Glock, which is a nice feature though, but honestly how it comes, fits me just fine. I'm not too picky about stuff like that. Uh, I did find that the magazine is a little bit easier for me to release on the SIG over the Glock. The slide release on this guy got a little bit hindered by the manual safety, so whenever I got that fresh mag in there and tried to send the slide home, I kind of interfered with that once or twice. On the Glock, it's very noticeable and obvious, and I didn't have that problem. There's also not a manual safety here, so easy enough, right? And so if I really had to choose between the two, I think, honestly, I'd probably go with the SIG because of the out-of-box trigger, out-of-the-box trigger, and also the sights. I prefer the iron sights on these guys. Again, that integrated night sight uh, by SIG over even the 19X's sights, which, you know, they're not bad, but not exactly what I would prefer. And U sights, like, no. Now, depending on what model you get, if you want to get a red dot capable or you know yeah red dot you, you, if you wanted a red dot mounting solution on your glock you can get the mos's that are out there and you can do that which is completely fine this one obviously just isn't that so that's not that big of a deal uh the manual safety i'll be honest with you guys probably wouldn't use it anyway i'm just going to keep that safety off one of the chamber and make sure that i'm uh, practicing my fundamentals like keeping your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot and pointing the gun in a safe direction and all that type of fun stuff which you should do anytime you're handling a firearm. So there you have it. Oh, and the magazines. Uh, the extended magazines that come with the SIG, well, 21 rounds compared to 19 rounds. So, uh, you know, kind of got you on that one. So let me know if you guys agree, disagree. Um, Again, if you want me to get a little bit more into detail about the VTAC, I can do that. It's been, it's been shown in a couple of videos now and I'll keep playing with this guy until, you know, I uh, get a staccato or something. Ursula, you watching? I know you and Katie have been talking, like, don't, don't cut me out of this, please. Anyway, so there you have it. Don't forget Alpha Omega holsters. Big shout out to those guys, though. We just recently finished up our uh, concealed carry pistol loadout series, and Alpha Omega provided the holsters for that. Worked out really well. They did great. They didn't break. They performed just as they wanted, as they, as they should, and I'm a fan, so awesome. So I'm rocking their stuff here, too. So don't forget, too, to head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries in for our current giveaway sponsored by SAR USA and also Alpha Omega, as I mentioned before, they're the ones that provided the holsters for the series. Fantastic quality stuff. I absolutely love running it. And if you're looking for an affordable quality option for an inside the waistband holster, outside the waistband, whatever it might be, check out Alpha Omega. And uh, with that, again, big shout out to SAR, not SAR USA. They provided the SAR 9C, all of the ammo shot throughout the series. And uh, we still have some leftover that I'll be shooting, just throwing that out there. So thanks, SAR, I appreciate you guys. And uh, you'll be seeing Kaya really soon, or at least hearing him really soon on our podcast, which is coming up. We haven't exactly f settled on a name yet, so let us know what you think the name should be down in the comments section. This should be... This should be pretty fun. I'll leave it off there. Make sure you utilize the code word you see at the bottom of the screen to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com and I will see you down in the comment section below. SIG versus Glock. And also maybe a torture test. If you haven't seen our buddy Brandon Texas Plinking's video, well, it might break some hearts and hurt some feelings. But go check that video out and let us know if you wanna see us do something kinda of similar. See you guys.